Let's continue. Yeah. Hi, Leela Harris here with Kidney Dulé Gill, and we're Dalian Method Facilitators, and this is episode number five. Today, what it's just me and Kendi today, but what we're going to discuss is the unconscious. What is the unconscious? What? How does it impact us? What? It, what does it even mean? And what kind of things are stored in the unconscious? Mm -hmm. Yeah, big, huge topic, yeah, but very I'm important. Excited. Yeah, I'm excited about this conversation because um, I don't feel like there was any education at all to help me to understand what the unconsciousness is or even its importance so i feel like whatever we can share today will be immensely useful yeah, mm. yeah absolutely so i would say the first thing to start with the unconscious is that it's a memory that we all have right it's a memory that we all have that's not readily easily accessible by our everyday conscious rational mind, yet we carry it, right? And yeah. We're carrying it and at, and at the same time, it's affecting our thoughts, it's affecting our judgments, it's affecting our behavior, it's affecting our relationships. So there's this thing that we're not aware of that we cannot recall readily anymore that's part of our unconsciousness, and yet it has such a big bearing on the quality of the life that we're living. Absolutely. And, and that's why I think it's such an interesting topic because, you know, like how come it has such a big bearing on our life? Because it wasn't until um, doing this inner work that I realized that Say, for example, I've got a thought like, um, well, I've forgotten, right? Say, for example, in my childhood, I might have felt um, I'm scared of something. Mm -hmm. And it would have been a natural thing. I'm scared because I'm small and the world looks big and difficult sometimes. So I'm scared of something. And, and let's put the something to be I'm scared of people in authority, like the school teacher or the parent, or the boss. So I somebody's in authority, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, as you grow up, it seems inevitable that you're likely to be scared of the authority. But the fact that that fear is there and we swallow it back, and we don't say, oh, I'm scared of you because you're the teacher. We just watch the teacher and she's handing out the instructions and she's giving us the role to play or whatever it might be. And then there's this anxiety that says, I've got to sort of now do what she's asking me to do. Because that becomes our state that, oh, there's the authority I've got to please. It's not obvious then that from the age of five onwards until 40 or 50 or 60 or whatever, that all of our actions are going to still have that subtle message that says, I'm scared of the one who's in authority. And, and I'm scared to not please. I'm scared to disappoint. I'm scared to not meet that person's expectations. It's not obvious that that one tiny little innocent feeling that is so easily happens to us at school is going to shape so much thereafter. Yeah, yeah, and then even when you're the adult, even when you're the big person, you still have that little child in you that, that it might not even be obvious that, it, that it's fear, but then you might just find yourself kind of making yourself small or not saying how you really feel or wanting, like you said, please the person or you just follow it thinking this is how it's supposed to be. It's always been this way. Yeah. Right? And not even be yeah. honest, not even be honest. Absolutely. And in, in yeah. my situation, so then I'm a mother of three children. If I hadn't have had this education and this understanding of my own psyche now, I certainly wouldn't have become aware that they are scared of me because I'm now the authority in their lives. Because yeah. we get this sense that, oh, yeah, we, we mess up occasionally. Or, yes, or we um, uh, raise our voice at the odd time or whatever. But really, the ripple effect is if I raise my voice because an expectation hasn't been met, the ripple effect, I wouldn't have understood 
Okay, so that actually now means that my child is at risk of being frightened too because I'm the authority to them. Yeah. And what might look like just an innocent, an innocent moment where I wasn't able to keep my composure has such a ginormous impact on the person that had to experience that. Yeah, and yeah, I, I wouldn't have known this had I not experienced it with my inner child and worked with that fear of authority. Yeah. But yeah, now I see all children, probably almost all children have that and no one knows it. And the child doesn't know that no one knows it. Yes. They don't, know, they don't know that people don't know their inner world. They just think all these big people are gods. And I'm just, that's just their mindset. That's just how no one says, hey, like no one makes them aware of what they're really experiencing because they're just trying to kind of follow along, get along. What am I supposed to do? Do yes. this, do this, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then what happens is we lose a part of ourselves. So like, for example, if you were the authority in this conversation, because you just led the process, like you introduced mm -hmm. us, right? So if you were the authority in this process, and that meant that because I had this invisible idea that I am still scared of authority, like my five-year-old still was alive, it would, it would mean that I couldn't be honest with you or actually articulate exactly what is really real for me and so a part of me would be held back, which actually means a part of me is not being lived, which actually means that I'm not comfortable in my own skin, which actually means I'm having an unhappy existence because I can't be who I am. Yeah. So the implications are so big because, and yet people will go, well, well, of course, you know, as you grow up, of course you're equal and of course you can voice your opinion, but it's not that simple because once these fears are a part of our unconsciousness, until they get seen and cleared out, they carry on running how we're going to behave. Yeah, that's why just using rational, like, hey, you know how sometimes people try to talk to people, talk to people, well-meaning, like someone's afraid, it's like, look, and it can help the person calm down, but look, doesn't make sense you don't need to be afraid of this or this or you're this or you're great or you're not doing anything wrong but the thing is that doesn't really solve the real issue because the problem is in the unconscious and it's always irrational yes. because it's the unconscious it, it doesn't it it's not the mind it doesn't it works on these memories and whatever that state was when we were in that experience is how we there's a part of us that feels that way. Yeah. Yeah. And I have actually a blog about this where I worked with the unconscious, with the, with the childhood fear of authority, where I noticed I started getting increasingly afraid of police officers. Okay. Wherever, every time I would drive, I would see police. I, I started to feel like the anxiety would get really pretty intense, actually. And I've already felt a already felt a little bit unease around them but you know it's like oh yeah just do what they say it's a good thing mm -hmm. it's a, you know like that's kind of the way I thought about it it's good to be submissive around these people mm -hmm. but I wasn't really feeling like shaky fear and then I was experiencing that intense fear in my body it was starting to surface mm -hmm. and so when I worked with it it was childhood stuff and it wasn't just police it was teachers it was anyone like these it was that, the authority and then the fear of authority. And it helped me when I cleared that. Wow. It was so huge. And the thing is, is when we clear these things from the unconscious, these things actually, whatever the unconscious is storing, it actually has weight to it. So when you transform them, you feel literally lighter and you also have more energy because it takes your life force, your creativity, all your intelligence is caught up in that energy that's being drained to sustain these things in the unconscious. It's a little bit hard to explain until you experience it, yeah. but it's very visceral actually when something's released. It's not just, it feeling better is yes, you feel better, the anxiety and those fears, but also just like your whole energy changes, yeah. One thing similar happened to me recently because the very last experience that I had with the Dalian Method, um, brought up an unconscious memory of um basically it was saying i can't do this i i i no actually was saying 
I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this and I don't want to do this. And then when it, we looked deeper, what was the this? Like it was a whole list of chores and activities and, and various tasks that we have to do just to stay alive. But then when, when we went further into the session, it was, so why don't I want to do this? And behind it was just exhaustion. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of having worked so hard. So the unconscious was saying, I don't want to do this. And then behind that was the exhaustion of like incredible levels where I hadn't given myself permission to rest when I needed to. After I'd finished that session with Mada, what happened was I literally felt like I had become 15 years younger mm -hmm. because suddenly the energy that was being used in resisting and not wanting to do things wasn't there sabotaging me. It's not part of my unconscious anymore. I have the new awareness that says, look, I can rest when I need to and when I'm exhausted. It, like I don't have to stop, keep resisting thinking um, I'm gonna be tired again, right? I can rest when I need to. So now the awareness says I can rest. So wh what's happening is when I go to bed or when I'm taking a break, it's like it's a deep break, it's a deep rest that brings back all the energy again. So when I go to do something, and I, the first thing I chose to do after that was to go on a treadmill, but my ability to be on the treadmill felt like I was 15 years younger. Mm, yeah. and, and this is the bit that's hard to get across to people when we talk about the unconsciousness, that the treasure chest of going in and finding what's there and transforming it is huge for us because not only does our behavior then match the new state, so my behavior in this case says I've got more energy, I'm more available, I can do things. So obviously going off and running on the treadmill has become easier. So that's a great new behavioral change. But the consequence of it going forward is I, I won't be resisting tasks. I won't be looking at things so heavily thinking, oh, this is going to exhaust me. So so again, whatever else I need to do in my life, there's more optimism and more excitement about giving the task a go than the old dread of, oh, this is going to be hard work. It's going to be a drain. I'm going to get exhausted. Yeah. So so much arises out of one little like yeah. of looking yeah. at something. Yeah, and that's what's amazing. You take one thing that's happening. It's the challenge that we're aware of, mm. right? And you were just aware of, like, I don't, I'm just having this thing, I don't want to do things. And yeah. some people just take it for granted. But the thing is, is what happens is you start to look at these things differently. You don't take it for granted, like, oh, yeah, I don't want to do things. Or start to feel like, you know, I'm going to explore this. Like, why feel, why not, like, explore these things so we can live, like, the, the most fullest life and not just carry all this stuff and think, oh, yeah, life is hard. But, yeah. And I forgot where I was going with that, <laughs> but you were, but yeah, we start with the initial issue, like what you were dealing with. And my thing was the fear of the cops and the shakiness, which I would have survived it. But yeah, and then you work with that and then it opens up this whole other thing that was the, the underlying root that wasn't just that problem. It's not like you just solve and resolve that issue. You, it's this and this and then it's like whoa now I feel this and it's like you feel it's like wow this, this is what it feels like not to carry this because often these things surface in my experience they surface like that fear was surfacing in me but and it was stronger but it had been there my whole life I'm like wow I've been carrying this and just like behaving this way where I was being submissive and you know like a little child just because the person is you know someone in a certain position. And I was the same way with bosses. It was like, okay, and they loved me because I worked hard, but it was like, no, I don't want to live like this. And yeah. yeah. And so then you start looking at your life differently because you're like, wow, I've had this forever. It's not like I just had the problem. It's just, we become more aware of these things. Yeah. We've been carrying it, but we didn't know that it was there. Not that's the awareness. It's like, aha, it's like a light bulb goes on. It's like, yeah, I've seen, I see how this has been affecting me my whole life. Yeah. And also our judgments. So now, for example, in my situation, I, I was automatically assuming that I didn't want to do this because it was going to lead to, oh, I'm lazy. 
So like, for example, oh, I'm what? Sorry, what was that? I thought it was going to take me to the place of, oh, I'm lazy. Like the judgment uh, yeah. of I'm lazy. Yeah. So for example, if a child in my home doesn't want to do something, a parent would easily go, okay, they were avoiding these tasks. They're avoiding doing this, this, and this. So they're being lazy, right? Yeah. You make assumptions. Yeah. Make an assumption and you judge. And then the child begins to self-judge. Uh, but yeah. the truth is there's no room for judgment anymore once you go in and look at your unconsciousness. Mm -hmm. Because once you get the understanding of the original bodily memory that was saying why you shouldn't do something, and in my case, it was exhaustion of being on this planet for so many lifetimes upon lifetimes and how exhausting it is to be in a physical body in action all the time. So once you get that understanding, then there's no room to self-judge or no room to take on somebody's judgment of you either. <laughs> so now suddenly you're in full acceptance of yourself and you're able to speak up enough to be able to be a full acceptance of other people without taking on somebody's interpretation of your behavior. Based on their own beliefs, which we all, that's what our judgments are coming from. That's right. Yeah, absolutely, that compassion place. So yeah, that's just like when I saw the little girl in school getting hit by the teacher, it was like there's so much compassion for where that fear came from. So yeah. Yeah, I wasn't judging myself for having a, a rational, strange fear. It was like, no, this has a real cause. And then it, when you work with these things, you start to look at other people instead of, you know, that compassion grows and extends to others. And you, you don't, it's like the judgments fall away. You don't have to like work on not being judgmental and all those things that people do because they're actually afraid of their judgments. It's like, they come because we don't know, we don't understand, we don't see what's really happening. and we were labeled the same way. Like you said, you know, they see, you know, oh, lazy, this, this. We get labeled with all these things. And then we grow up and we label others That's with the right. same thing, you know? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so this, at least when you go back in to look at your own unconsciousness, not, are you, not only are you freeing up your energy so that there's more life force inside mm -hmm. you to live your life, not only are you actually freeing up your energy and transforming that into light so that you've learned the lesson behind the experience you're you're also unifying yourself with other people so your your eyes that look at another human being they look at another human being with like you say more compassion more mm -hmm. understanding more leniency more forgiveness because you've seen what it was like inside you you naturally know that the other person is going through the similar things. And so your tendency to go, okay, I'm going to try and get you to, I'm going to force you to change. You, you really understand that's not possible. Yeah. yeah. How, yeah. Can, how is it possible? And then, and then the clue, like how do we find our unconsciousness? One of the things that I've begun to notice over the last 10 years is when I know that I've, um, I've been stirred by a remark that's been made, then typically that stirring is because deep in my unconsciousness, I believe what that person has said. So now if I go in and find what's unconscious and transform it, that stirring won't happen. I'll be stable, I'll be peaceful, I'll be calm, and nothing can be said to me from outside that's gonna affect my happiness, and nothing's gonna be said to me from outside that's actually going to make me miserable because I can experience my own peace and my own calm. So the biggest clue in our relationships, I mean, they're a godsend, really. In our relationships, if something gets said and we get upset, we do know that means there's a lost part of ourselves that we haven't yet retrieved. And the minute we go into our unconsciousness, clean it up, transform it, it's like being reunited with yourself, like more of you. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that you, that you don't judge, right? I can relate so much because I've always had this kind of painful neediness inside of me. Right. Where I just wanted everyone to like me and wanted to please them. and. 
kind of this fear of being alone or kind of that experience of standing alone, like, you know, having a different opinion, even if it's no big deal. It's just something I didn't experience in my life. And growing up and feeling like, oh, I didn't get enough attention from my parents. And I was just kind of, when I was younger, even in my 20s and early 30s, I was just still hoping for their you know, something. And it's just wonderful to shift that when I started doing this work where it's like, wow, there's an aloneness inside that is not a painful neediness. Yeah. It feels like, okay, I feel sturdy in myself and I can stand alone. What's interesting is the more I feel that, the more I, it's, my heart is opening yeah. <laughs> and I just feel connected to others just because I don't know, I just feel my heart opens more and I actually feel more of a connection. It's not really like, oh, you need to be alone. You know, you need to, it's like, no, it's inside. And then I can really enjoy people and for who they are without needing something from them. It just feels good for me. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's not that the neediness doesn't pop up, you yeah. know, because there's always, you never know if there's more like deeper layers, but just to have like, so much less of that and even when it comes up it's not near as painful or scary because I know it's like okay I can work with this I can look at you know I don't have to run away from these inner experiences they get triggered you know but yeah. I think you're making a very very important point about our unconsciousness the amount of um, neediness that's tucked away inside it Mm -hmm. the level of expectations that we have of other people, the, um, the, the depth of the desires that we have for other people to take care and prop us up rather than being self-sufficient. It's actually quite shocking to see, because we go through life and we somehow muddle our way through. So if like, for example, in my case, I was born a shy person. So then I somehow conjure up this ability to, to speak a little bit more strongly to protect myself. Really, it's a protection for how scared and shy I feel inside, right? So there's still a pain there because I'm having to become something that I'm not really to hide how vulnerable and how shy I feel. So the beautiful thing with this is that the more you tap into your unconsciousness, the less the shy person even exists because yeah. she's falling away. And the more you don't have to protect anything about yourself. You don't have to be as guarded. There's less yes. to run away from, less to be guarded. Yeah. 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 And then your heart is much more open to the people around you naturally because you're not scared of anybody for any real reason. You're there sort of like in more of a loving way but yet like you said as we go on another fear might crop up or another need might show up like I've I've experienced sort of an aspect of me the neediness part come up um since Wednesday this week and at one point I was shocked with the amount of tears that came along with it like really really shocked because it felt it felt, it felt that I had become so strong that something like that wasn't going to come in from left field to destabilize me at all, right? It just didn't, I wasn't even expecting it in that way. But now I just allowed the tears to flow because I knew that underneath the tears that were flowing was actually my heart that was flowing. I could see the two things happening. It was like, like there was a part of me melting away as the tears were flowing. Or like, like the, 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 guarded shell, yeah, the guarded part, yeah. the shell that wasn't able to say what it really wanted to say. Yeah. Like that fell away as I fell into. Yeah. And that's, and I feel, do you feel that this is your strength that allows you to go into that? Because you said you're feeling stronger. Yeah. And I find this happens. We feel, oh, these things, all these things are, happening we feel a shift and then something comes up and it can at first we can say oh you know like I was doing so well why is this happening yeah. it's like regression but actually what it is is you're going deeper right. and I'm less I'm getting less of that wait 
it's going wrong. And it's like, I know it's like, yeah, this is how it works. It's like, and then it's not like hard work or painful as much. No. It's just like, oh, I know how this goes. And then there's more of like, yeah, there's more, but there's not a judgment about there's more. In fact, there's like, okay, I'm going deeper. So yeah, that's, that's, right. a, that's, that's wonderful right. that you are, you allowed yourself to go to yeah. that depth with yourself. That's yeah. right. I've got bigger bags this week because of it. <laughs> to my oh, I, I, I hadn't noticed actually. <laughs> so. more, there, but there was no resistance around the fears. No mm -hmm. one run away from them no wanting to escape from the tears I saw that they were flowing I allowed them to do what they were doing I tried to understand the message behind them um, and I've been surprised with how many tears have flowed right mm. but but it hasn't really been something that has taken me into suffering or yeah. it's, it's taken me into a deeper place looking at somewhere else within the unconsciousness that's now ready to be transformed. Because mm. I, had, I had a client one time, I was thinking about a bodily memory, like when, when she came to see me, completely forgotten her five-year-old experience in a war zone, mm. where, where in order to survive the terror of the gunshots and everything and the grenades and everything that was happening, what she had done was she had cleverly figured out that if I fall asleep, I don't have to be scared. And so when we had our first session with her as a client, what happened was as she was going into the fear, she was falling asleep because she needed to escape from the fear, not feel the fear. And then eventually I helped her to actually stay alert to it. And then the fear became transformed but she's long gone forgotten that it has anything to do with um, the war zone experience. And what had happened was that her relationship wasn't going very well. And so there'd been a parting of ways and she thought she was just becoming sadder and that's why she was having to sleep. But she was having to sleep as an adult because that old memory that said, when you're afraid, go to bed so that you don't have to feel it, that memory was coming up and sapping her of all the energy. Because she didn't want to feel what was going on as a result of the loss of the relationship, huh? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And yet she did see the symptom that I'm beginning to want to sleep and therefore I'm not functioning as well. So therefore there's something wrong with me and therefore I need fixing and therefore I need correcting. Like, and she would have tried to force herself to get out of bed but it would have been impossible to get out of bed with the right energy until that memory of the war zone experience that was tucked in her unconsciousness had a chance to be transformed. Yeah, and that's a good point is that a lot of the struggles we're dealing with, they're symptoms of the unconscious. Yes. They're not, they're only, it's almost like we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg here. That's right. Until you go in the unconscious, then you see like the whole story behind it. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, okay then it makes sense because so many of us are trying to like fix, shape ourselves, or we're hiding our real, like I do this, I do, I have this problem or whatever. We don't realize there's a whole story behind it or our avoidance patterns and those kind of things that we learn those. And, uh, and in a way, when you were describing earlier about like neediness, like you know, that, that space of like sometimes when we feel like we're a victim, mm -hmm. The truth is all human beings are a victim to their unconsciousness. Yeah. That part, they definitely are like the, their reality that's arising with like with the law of attraction. So like if there's, if there's a sense that I'm, I'm say for example, the, the sense is I'm afraid of a bully. Mm -hmm. Well, if the unconsciousness is saying I'm afraid of the bully, then the law of attraction has to bring the bully into your life because the unconsciousness has this energy and quality in it that says fear, bully, fear, bully, fear, bully, fear, bully. It's all happening invisibly, but that's what's in your energy. So like radiating, out. Yeah. radiating out. So then life in its very compassionate way says, okay, I'm going to bring the bully in because unless, and that's a match, a direct match, 
Because unless the bully comes in, this person who's got this energy going, fear, bully, fear, bully, is not going to become empowered and learn their lesson and be in their strength and in their real confidence unless the bully comes in. So the bully shows up in our life yeah. and now's our moment to transform our outside life into something better, but it's only going to happen if we go into the memory that has fear, bully, fear, bully, fear, bully going on until that gets transformed. We see our strength and then the outside no longer has to do what it's doing. So, so many times we keep seeing tragic, tragic things happening in life, but those tragic things are arising because somewhere in that person's energy is a direct match to that outside experience. And I just want to say another thing about the bully. Now the bully has to learn a lesson too. So everyone in the dynamic is learning their lesson too. That's and it's not, it's never about fault or deserving. It's no. about your opportunity to grow That's because, right. because if, and so many times, and of course we have a right to stand up for ourselves. boundaries. Absolutely. Even when I was talking about my heart's opening, I'm also, feeling my strength to be, you know, like there's boundaries too. It's not like a, just, you know, like, ah. Yeah. Just lost you there. Yeah, we do have that right. You there? Do you have me now? Yes, uh, come back in. Are we back? Oh, okay. So if you just get rid, because sometimes we're just like, I need to get rid of this, right? Because it's painful, it's intense. I need to get rid of this. And of course, if we're in a dangerous relationship, it's important to sometimes get perspective and, well, get safe, first of all. That's right. But also, sometimes you can't even think straight until you're out of the intensity of the dynamic. But you don't want to just stay focused on getting rid of this negative person, that negative, and get in the habit. Because you want to, at some point, start looking in and going, at least in my opinion, it's best to, okay, then what do I need to see here? And right. what is this trying to show me is such a powerful question to ask. And it's so empowering. It's not really, we don't come from a place, when we're asking these questions, we are not coming from a place of like, kind of beating ourselves up. What did I do to deserve this? No. What did I do to attract this? It's more like, what is this trying to show me? It, there's an if you shift inside to that place, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful shift actually out of that feeling so helpless and that someone else has power over me. Absolutely. And every time, whatever we are being shown is a common thing. It's always helping us to be more in our inner strength, more in our power, more back into our own creative juices. So every time we're being shown anything, it's going to be an aspect of any of that. Like I, when you were saying that, I was remembering a story of a friend and she had various issues with her, with her dad. And then they repeated themselves again with her husband. And then she left. So she ran away from home and then she left her, her husband. And then the same thing started to happen with her neighbor. And the reason why it kept repeating itself was because the solution of attempting to run away from the situation wasn't actually the solution. Deep within her unconsciousness was something that was emanating that energy that these experiences kept coming in. And until she becomes willing to go into the unconsciousness and transform and see the lesson behind the experience, the outside can't change. The outside has to stay the way it is until you're willing to change. I've had that. I, when I look back over my life, my experience with people has totally dramatically changed. I used to be around people where it was just like I didn't recognize it, but there was a lot of kind of um, just a way of relating that was really not there was no heart, there was no, it's like being cruel, right? Or you make comments, you know, like that kind of, you know, cutting people down. And I was, and I was just kind of, I don't think I even noticed there was something outside of that. Yeah. It, because I was just feeling that way about myself as well, but I still struggled with it. And then I would get angry at people and then, you know, have these things, these people that I say I cared about, but really I was afraid of them. 
Yeah. I had friends that I was afraid of. I was afraid of my partner. I was afraid of everyone, even though I felt like I cared about them. And then there was behavior that was being allowed that I would never allow now. But I'm grateful for the experiences because I see why, you know, I was having that. And it shows me how something about life and our energy and our unconscious. So, yeah, I don't regret anything. I don't hold any resentment. And that's another thing when we work with our unconscious, we work with that feeling of wherever we are, whether it's blame, the victim, anger, sadness. But, but when you truly resolve it, you're not carrying the baggage of this person did this or that, you know, that feeling of like being haunted by something. No. You don't have that. No, you it just bad. goes. It's like um, you just let go of the baggage. You release the other person. You don't think about it so much. So yeah. Yeah, and there's no even, there's no even real even for forgiveness either because it's all part of the process that's helped you to transform. Yeah. So there's a total acceptance of everything around you. Yeah, and then you see the other person was in their own dynamic, and that's why you came together. That's and right. whether they do their own work, we we can't control, but we can do our own. Yeah. I'm wondering, so what other ways does the unconscious show up? So we talked about Behavior. the relationships and the fear and yeah. authority. Well, so certainly it's the circumstances that are coming in. If yeah. there's an adverse experience that's coming in, it's almost guaranteed to be showing up because there's an unconscious element inside you that you're now ready to transform. Otherwise, it wouldn't even show up. So if it's an yeah. adverse experience, it's definitely coming in for that reason. If there's an adverse relationship, certainly the same thing. If there's something to do with like money where maybe there's a job loss or um, um, in terms of your business, maybe something's not flowing so well. Again, it has something to do with your unconscious. So it's like relationships, um, relationships, then there's your economic sort of career profile, all of that. Um, it's, it, it almost feels like, and even within your family structure, if there's something going on within that too, it tends to be a, it tends to be a clue that there's something going on inside you that you need to see. So it shows up in all sorts of places in our lives, in our careers, in our personal life, in our relationships, in our money life, everywhere. And they're all, they are, they're interrelated, of course, they're, they're not, you have one issue and one, you resolve that, it resolves like so many areas of our lives naturally because our energy is changing. Yeah. We're, it's like yeah. you almost shift from the deepest core of who you are. Absolutely. That's where the, the change happens. It's like, yeah. And I already gave you the example of, so if something's happening outside of me and I'm getting triggered, then that means that there's something inside me. Then there's the other part, when we accuse somebody. Uh, yeah. uh, so if I were to accuse you of behaving a certain way, the minute that accusation is coming out towards a person again, again, that is a clue to the fact that you're accusing somebody of something that you're unconscious of about yourself. Absolutely. I can, yeah, I can definitely. And also one thing that's interesting about that is like, you know, I was talking about neediness and there's like, oh yeah, you know, I've cleared so much neediness, right? Yeah. And I'm in such a stronger place, but I was starting to feel like there was someone that in my life that really triggered me because of that they were needy. So yeah. even though I'd worked through all this, there was, it was still a mirroring of a more subtle neediness and like a need to please. And I thought it was irritating me. And, but yet I'm like, but is this a mirror? Because I thought I'm done with it, but it was, it was just a more subtle, but it needed to be intense for me to see it because when these things are subtle, it's like, it's harder. Yes. So I, you know, and so it, it was a little bit like, okay yeah really kind of taking time with it to to kind of see where that was coming from and really know that there was still that in me that was really irritated by this person's neediness and now i can be more just in my boundary with you know with my energy but it's less intense you know it's less intense and then also the other thing leela is the fact that when we take the effort 
to become conscious of something but the opposite of this so we've transformed the unconsciousness and we've become conscious of a new awareness and a new learning the beautiful thing with that is what it spontaneously does for us in the way that our life improves so if i go back to the example i was sharing with you before about um not wanting to do things so then there's the other half of the coin so there's one half that says i don't want to do things i don't want to do things and the other half is saying i have to do and if i don't do i won't receive i have to do and if i don't do i receive that's also a, an unconscious pattern that's why we've got so many people that work so hard with their initiatives because it's running with this unconscious belief that unless i do i won't receive so I had that half as well in my unconsciousness. And the amazing thing with that was the minute that that was transformed, life events started to show up to show me that I didn't have to actually do anything to receive. So for example, when it came to the Paris conference that I'm going to be speaking at in the summer, the program director actually approached me on LinkedIn. I didn't approach her. And so that's a prime example of once my energy had been transformed, then life says, okay, now you're ready to receive. So, so many people want things, but they can't have them because they've got an unconscious belief stopping them. So take that example. If I've got a belief that says, unless I do, I can't receive. The life is saying, well, okay, carry on doing then because apparently you can't receive unless you do, right? And you won't receive what you're looking for because you're busy doing and doing and doing. And then when you get to the awareness that says, ah, existence is always taking care of me and I can trust that I'm always being taken care of and I can trust that everything can come in in this timely way. Now with that new energy, existence goes, well, here you go, have that and have that and have that and have that. I know you've been waiting for it, but you're now ready for it. Yeah. That's great. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's what I've been working with recently. Okay. And trying to build a business and then learning about things like marketing and all these things. And I started getting really tired. Okay. And then not wanting to do anything, right? Okay. So I, one of my patterns is this kind of like this laziness, but it's been a long pattern. Why? Because it's related to so many different things. Mm -hmm. So it's my coping strategy for a lot of things. So when it comes up again, it's a different thing every time. <laughs> so sometimes the reverse happens. And so we judge when it's like, oh, I've been doing this work and I'm still like sitting on the couch and, you know, like, you know, zoning out to Netflix. But it's like, yeah, you've worked with it, but there's something else that's using, like, remember the woman that goes to sleep? That's right. This is my kind of way of, of coping. Thing. I don't. And I'm now learning how to rest without going zoning out. The reason I needed to zone out is because in my unconscious, it's like, you got to make it happen. you got to like, it's like organize, think about it, rehearse or work on this. It's like everything. So the reason I was avoiding because I had something similar recently that's like the unconscious was like, it's got to be hard because you're building something. And so, yeah, there's work in it, but what I'm learning is to like enjoy myself and relax. And that's like how I work mm. instead of like, is everything done? It's that pattern in me. Mm. Yeah. I mean, and I it's amazing. amazing. And I didn't know that. I didn't know that unconsciously I was driving myself so tired that I would have to do that yeah. when it's like, have fun instead of like doing the, the zoning out, have fun, have fun with the work, that's relax true. with the work and do it in a way that feels good instead of thinking work yeah and I, I wonder how many of us have been conditioned in this way that it has to be hard I think most of us yeah. have. most of us have most of us are running with huge to-do lists of tasks that need to be completed mm -hmm. most of us yeah. have this sense that I I am the one that has to make everything happen and we're not yeah. giving the impression that you can sit on your backside and not actually be in action but it's just the quality of the action that starts to unfold when you deal with your unconsciousness becomes easier. Let go of control. Yeah. It just, the quality just yeah. becomes a little bit easier and there's more energy available. There. Did you get caught? Just trying to see whether this internet is still stable.
Yeah. It's sound, sound yeah. like, sounding like a Dalek for a few minutes. Wait. Oh, yeah, you're back on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> so, so that's what basically happens is that things become easier to act on and our energy becomes capable of flowing. Yeah. And now I tend not to ever write mm -hmm. a list because it doesn't seem too important because why do I need to bog myself down with a list? What can be done in that day can be done. And what mm -hmm. isn't to be done that day, it wasn't destined to be done that day. It will get done the next. You can go. Yeah. And I've noticed that too. Um, well, with sticky notes and like trying to write a lot of things down, I'm doing less of that. And it's more about, I'm afraid I'll forget, you know, and so it, it feels good when I'm able to let go of having to put a sticky note thinking, you know, I got, you know, I'm afraid I'll forget because one thing I've noticed is, is even when I forget something, it's usually no big deal. And it feels freeing like, Oh, I forgot. And it's like, no big deal. Everything's fine. But also people will remind me or I'll get a reminder. So it's it, a lot of this thing, these things that we're talking about, it's how much that, life really supports us exactly. in amazing ways that we thought we had to like get, do all this control all of it make sure it's like all those things start to dissolve and it's so wonderful it's like how much life can be easy even when it's there's a challenge we can still be easy on ourselves and True. yeah yeah so like that weight that that burden that you think you're carrying like solely you're carrying on your own yeah it's like it just yeah. feels like it just keeps falling off and falling off and falling off. And you yourself physically don't feel so weighed down and so heavy and so lethargic. There's more of a buoyancy that begins to flow. Yeah. Out you. yeah. And I used to take several trips a year and look so forward to those little trips I took, whether it was a road trip or flying somewhere, because those were the times when I could really let go. Yeah. And now I feel like whether I don't need that as much and I don't need it's like, you know, like these things about bubble baths and pedicures and all these things where people find a way. It's like you can feel that yes. in your daily life more and more without having to wait for the weekend or your, your trip or this or that out of your, you know, like life becomes less of this drudge that you have to kind of wait to have a break from. Yeah. yeah you begin to enjoy every day rather than having to, to, run towards something to recuperate from where you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing also that I've seen is that the more we do work on our own unconsciousness, the less there is to question about life. Mm -hmm. Like for example, I, I had one client a little while back and he was, um, he was like into self-judgment, his marriage had collapsed and um, there was a lawsuit against him and all sorts of stuff going on. And as we went through the different layers that existed there, like these were memories that were trapped in his body, traumatic memories from when he was two years old. So mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. happens is you, you get to a place where it doesn't matter what the story is and why he's, being sued and why somebody's saying something against him and what's happened to him. Like that story is completely irrelevant because as a two year old, there's a memory in his body that's driven that quality of life. Mm -hmm. And really all that needs to happen is go back into the memory and let's undo all of this. So then this noise that's going on for today's circumstances where the system says, well, if he did this, then sue him. Or if he did this, then make him punish, punish him. Or if he did this, then deal with him that way. Like all that aggression and nastiness and separation, none of it needs to exist once you start going into your unconsciousness and you just compassionately deal with the imprint that created it. Yeah, yeah and there's less of the looking out in the world and seeing bad people <laughs> there's bad people there's good people it's like yeah. it just that it stops making sense and yeah our justice system is there and our society needs to work a certain way in that sense but we don't need there's a sense of we don't need to have our be conditioned with that mentality 
right? Which I think we are actually, but we need to undo that. But, well, we but need yeah, to we need like to justice and punishment and bad and good. And then, yeah. Yeah, that part, because we need it for like the average level of consciousness that exists on the planet. And at a certain level, there are some people that will be operating so way below that average level that the justice system is needed there for as a punitive measure to try and elevate where they're at. Mm -hmm. But the more you become conscious and take responsibility of your own life and deal with these unconscious imprints inside you, the less you need any structure to formally guide you because you're not going to go and make a decision that's going to hurt another human being. You're not going to go and make a decision that's going to cheat another human being. You're not going to treat another human being as if they're not an extension of yourself. So every aspect of the quality of life just improves the more conscious you're progressively becoming. And that's just the beauty. That's the byproduct, right? It's like having, it's like having, having heaven on earth, right? But, but that's the place you start moving towards. But in the interim, at least whatever is happening in your world, if it's not working for you and if it's upsetting you, the most important aspect to remember is that your unconsciousness will give you the key to unhinge you from what's not working for you. Rather than have to fight the world. Yeah, and, and then fix little things, compartmentalize. I got to fix this. I got to fix this. I have a knee pain here. I have a relationship here, issue here. I got this thing at work. They could all be related and then go away with the same, you know, working with on that level. And Kindy, I wonder if you notice this because sometimes when I'm talking to people and I tell them, they ask me what I do with the value method facilitating. And, and I try to describe it and I talk about working with the unconscious, yeah. they get a little bit like, hmm, you know, yeah. like I don't, like I, they automatically think, oh, I've got something bad in there. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, yeah, even my first memory was, oh, no, oh no, if somebody's going to look inside, I wonder what terrible thing they're going to find. But now the way that I deal with it is just like with just the conversation, we have a bias. Mm -hmm. in the way that we respond that bias doesn't always serve us so i tend to talk to people about the fact that if if you have a bias that is actually feeding your blind spots and it's contributing to making your life more difficult and you had a way to switch that and not be caught in that way of having to live would you consider it yeah that's a better way to explain it but i just brought it up for anybody watching yeah. That has that sense as they're listening, they keep hearing the word unconscious. They might, that might be standing out. Yeah. And like that might be coming up fear of like, and just so you know, like there's something about us that we think, oh, my dark thoughts or my negative feeling, it's only me. Like no one else has this. It's not true. It's not true. Right. It may be a little bit different. Almost universally people think their their negativity is specially dark it's it's not like we're all we're actually very similar and there's no such thing as someone who's like a special case that's like yeah it's 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 always the fear of looking into that place inside and we think that but it's yeah it's often what people find is nothing compared to the fear of the anxiety of looking and the ideas the mind has. What if it's this? What if it's some dark thing? And yeah. And also the fear maybe of why would I want to go back to a memory that's in my body that wasn't a very palatable memory yeah. at the time? Yeah. So why would I want to go back and address that now? So to, to, to address that fear, you would only go into the memory for a very short process of the Dalian method. And then immediately you're taken out of that memory to see the lesson behind it. And then you're set free from it forever. Yeah. So again, the mind might say, I wouldn't want to go there. Mm -hmm. But the truth is you'll feel so much better for the fact that you took the courage yeah. to go there, that it's worth it. Because yeah, it's like 10 minutes of working with the fear or the, the sadness or the tears versus a lifetime of carrying this weight. Yeah. 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 And for me, when, I, when it comes to 
the fear about the negative thoughts and things like that now, I just find that those of us that have been willing to go into the treasure chest of our unconsciousness, we've been, we've been building a quality of relationship that doesn't exist anywhere on the planet. Mm. So it's ironic that we all seek, you know, heart to heart connections. It's ironic that we all seek like to be understood, to be accepted for other people to um, be able to relate to us and for us to feel loved. And to, like, we all seek that desperately. And so the ironic thing is that all that we seek automatically is just made available to you as you go into your unconsciousness because there's two things that are happening. One is you're less needing those things. And two, you suddenly get yourself into a, a community of people that so understand you and have so much compassion for you that there is everything you've been seeking. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. That's been my experience too. It's like it happens on the inside, but don't think that it's not going to come on the outside too. It's happening it's automatically. Beautiful experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so much camaraderie in helping each other along. Like if there's a blind spot for one of us, like the other ones are there wanting that like we're sort of almost like the cheerleaders wanting you to find what the unconscious is that's driving it. So you can move on in your journey too. Yeah, because it is easier to see in another than it is to, in ourselves. And that's another thing that gives compassion is, you know, it, it's like the per it's they're not aware of what they're doing when we pick up on these things no. so yeah and when we're, we're relating to you know with us we're doing our inner work we can you know speak about it and sometimes it might be appropriate to talk to someone about it but regardless we use our intuition that way but there's just more understanding of um where where there's unawareness so this unconsciousness stuff stuff it's not about like who's unconscious and who's doing what it's like yeah <laughs> it's like we're all unconscious. Or if that's happening then yeah then there's something inside that's judging ourselves right yeah. that's doing that yeah so then there's a reason yeah yeah and it's very graceful the more of us that begin to take responsibility to transform the lighter we're becoming the lighter the world becomes the easier it becomes to live the more energizing it is, the more joy you get to experience. So there's so much to gain by giving it a go and everybody can go at their own pace. So if, if there's some memory that we know, and most of the time we've forgotten these memories, that's why they're unconscious. So the beauty is we can just go at the speed that works for us and we can keep our freedom intact. And then yeah. when something feels right, we'll go in a bit deeper. And if we can't, then if we don't want to, then nobody's making anybody do anything, are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Natural well, kindness, haven't we? Yeah. Any, any final notes? It's such a, I love this topic. Yeah. Um, my final note would really be that if, it, just to be left with the thought, that if there's a part of your life that's not working for you, whether it's in your relationships or it's in your career or um, your relationship with yourself or you're thinking that you're not enough, etc., or your finances, if there's any aspect that's not working for you, at least try to remember that there's a part in your own individual unconsciousness that is waiting right now to be transformed. Mm -hmm. And that's why that adversity is there in your yeah. life. Absolutely, an opportunity, right? Yeah, yeah beautiful, Kinty. Yeah. All right. Yeah, great way to end the call today. Thank you for so, so much for this talk. I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, thank you, Lila, for, for all your efforts in this too. Have you got anything you want to close off with before? No, we... that was beautiful. Okay. Nothing Perfect. else to say. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Bye.